We're going to talk about what I would like to call the Alpha Widowmaker. Now, how you can Alpha Widow your partner during sex. If you're going to be a boss, be a boss. I'm Paul, Apex Mindset, apexmindset.net to book a consult or to get the Alpha Mindset course. Of course, watch the video till the end. It helps me with the algorithms and make sure you're subscribed. Let's get into the Alpha Widowmaker. Got my bullet whiskey cup here, but it's only filled with coffee. So the Alpha Widowmaker, kind of a funny name I just sort of gave to this. We're going to focus in on one particular type of female orgasm. And if you're able to create the situation where she can have this orgasm during sex, especially if she's never had this type of orgasm before, there's a good chance that you've alpha widowed her at that point. And when I say alpha widowing, that means you're establishing dominance in the bedroom, that you're the best sexual option she has ever had. We'll kind of get into the psychology a little bit behind orgasms. There's different ideas on whether or not a woman having an orgasm with you is due to alpha or beta type behavior in the bedroom, or whether giving a, giving a girl an orgasm is beta or alpha. It's a really weird discussion or concept or idea to me. This idea or notion of wanting to split everything up into a binary category of alpha or beta, it kind of defies the way that I think and logic because usually things are not binary or black and white. And those terms are really just being used as descriptive terms. They're not, it, it's not like there's a very solid scientific definition for what is established as something as alpha or beta. But, but I digress, okay? The argument behind it's beta to give a girl orgasms is basically rooted in the idea of a guy trying to please her and please the woman and her being comfort comfortable enough in the sexual circumstance and relaxed enough in order to have that orgasm so based on her relaxation you know her level of relaxation and his desire to please that's what establishes her orgasms but i have a different take on that let's look at this a little bit from an evolutionary perspective and how males and females evolved orgas orgasmically so men evolved to have frequent sex all month long and to be ready to have sex and yet to, to orgasm rather quickly. So the average time and penetration for a guy before he, you know, orgasms is about four to seven minutes. Um, it was roughly probably more leaning towards the faster side of that uh, in our evolutionary past. Uh, hey, you're busy. You got things to do and there are predators around the corner or something, right, maybe. And so, and of course you live in tight communities. And so guys are tended to be quick and the average hunter gatherer probably wasn't learning Tantra or BDSM, okay? So average, uh, you know, most hunter gatherers, they're not trying to necessarily mm, improve their staying power necessarily or any of those things. Now, women's, on average takes around 14 minutes or so of penetration for her to have an orgasm. Okay, give or take, could be shorter or longer. Now, of course, there are situations where you can, get a, you can get a woman so aroused that she orgasms in 60 seconds, okay, or less uh, through the right preparation and techniques. So it's not necessarily a, a given that she's gonna take that long all the time, but that's just the average and what that average points to is our sexual strategy and how we evolve sexually. Now, there's another aspect to orgasm, you know, for a woman, which is that it stimulates oxytocin. And so whoever she orgasms with stimulates a flood of oxytocin after that orgasm, which makes her want to feel closer to that particular partner and try to latch onto that partner for her others, not only for their future sexual needs, but um, for bonding, provisioning, all that stuff, which I know someone might say, argue that that could be beta, right? Uh, but um, the, the, where it, what it does do, though, is it shuttles that sperm that's 
in her body now. And you know that she may have had sex with multiple people at back in hunter gatherer times. So she may have had sex with two or three people during ovulation and the person that she's able to orgasm with that oxytocin acts as a shuttle to put that guy's sperm above and beyond the rest of the sperm into to fertilize that egg. Um, it's an interesting concept that they've researched and studied that's well established. So if she is pining for sex for the genetic best option, who is the alpha, and then her orgasm is making it more likely for her to get pregnant from that guy who caused the orgasm, then it stands to reason that she's more likely to orgasm with the alpha, which makes sense because she's going to be more aroused by the alpha and more attracted to that genetic option. But why have it take so long, right? Well, the reason it takes so long is because that makes her horny still and both the length of time it takes her to have an orgasm as well as being multi-orgasmic makes her want to continue to seek sex out either from that same partner or other partners while she's ovulating when she's feeling horny. So it's not a satiable thing where a guy orgasms, he's satiated for a period of time usually, unless of course, I mean, depending on, there's all kinds of variances here, right? We're talking about statistical norms here. And so he's generally satiated for a period of time and there's a refractory period. If nothing else is being done to improve, of course, his sexual abilities, Whereas the woman, if she's ovulating and really horny and she has a flood of those hormones that she has during that period of her cycle, she's generally not satiated after one orgasm, at least not for very long. And so she's seeking more sexual opportunities, which is more fitting for uh, pregnancy, right? And, re- and getting pregnant. So that's why it causes her to seek out more partners during ovulation to hopefully copulate or find the genet- best genetic option. And that best genetic option is competing with the other sperm inside of her body. And the oxytocin that she gets from an orgasm is shuttling or helping that sperm reach the egg above and beyond the rest of those. So orgasming is a very primal thing for a woman and does serve a purpose, which is to get her impregnated with the person she's most aroused with, which in theory, is that alpha. And although, yes, she'll fake orgasms for first encounters with an alpha, that's statistically proven because she's so nervous and her sexual anxiety is so high and she wants basically to have him be a repeat customer. But that's just a first encounter. Subsequent encounters, her anxiety comes down and she's more likely to orgasm with the guy she's more attracted to than a guy she's not attracted to, assuming everything else, of course, is the same on a technical level. Now, where a guy can establish himself as the alpha is causing that orgasm through penetration during the sexual encounter. So the guy who is working hard to give her an orgasm through oral and you know manual stimulation and toys and all that stuff, He may give her a great sexual experience, create a lot of intense emotions for her. And that's good. Okay. Obviously, and that's going to, it feels good. So pleasure principle states, she'll come back for more. But on a primal level though, my hypothesis is the guy that can give her a, a vaginal orgasm, in particular, a deep vaginal orgasm, that's really hitting more on those primal drives. Chances are, you know, cave chad and cave stacy i mean how much oral sex are they doing right so when what what gets down to the brass tacks of copulation for the for for procreation which is where our desires point us towards that that's why our desires exist more or less it's there's pair bonding reasons and other reasons but the most primal reason for our sexual desire and to want to become satiated sexually is to procreate and to cause that pregnancy. It stands, to, and, and that pregnancy is most likely to be caused if she's orgasming during sex with the man inside of her and ejaculating inside of her, and she's had that orgasm, right? So it stands to reason then that on a most basic primal level, 
the guy she can orgasm with through penetrative sex is going to really imprint her and make her feel that that is that genetic option for her. This is regardless of what the guy looks like and regardless of all those other factors. If she can have a penetrative orgasm with him, then her primal side of her brain is not going to be able to help but associate him with that alpha, with that genetic option. About a third of women are not having orgasms during sex, period, okay? When they are, the ones that are usually having it I'll say it on their terms. What that means is there's a specific formula that she is used to that gives her the orgasm. Maybe she has to be on top or she's in missionary, but she has to stimulate her clitoris or she's in a uh, you know, doggy, but he has to be really rough with her or he has to be really gentle with her in a certain way. And, you know, she made manual st manually stimulate herself or you know, maybe not. Uh, you'll hear a common thing as girls who can only orgasm on top because they can control the situation and stimulate her clitoris on his uh, pelvic region while she's on top and create that orgasm and that's those sensations. And, and that's, that's how she's learned. And so most women have learned to orgasm through a specific formula. And so it's really just like, a, B, A, B, up, down, left, right. And then, and she orgasms. Okay. And that's, and that's that particular girl and another particular girl has another formula. So they're not that diverse orgasmically. So there's that part of it. And then most women are only used to really orgasming uh, through a clitoral or orgasm or, or stimulation of the clitoris on the outside. So a smaller percentage of women are orgasming through penetrative sex at all. And the ones that are, are stimulating their clitoris on the outside. Okay. So there's a way though, you can get a girl to orgasm through the vaginal penetration and erogenous zones inside of her, her vagina. And there's a couple different ways. One is the G-spot orgasm. I'm sure everyone is just saying to themselves, oh, G-spot orgasm, because that's what everyone thinks, you know everything. And um, that's, uh, yeah, that's one way. What I'm going to talk about to you today, though, when, I, when I'm referring to the alpha widower, okay, I'm talking about a deep, what has been termed cervical orgasm, or A spot orgasm, or C spot orgasm, sometimes caused, called a P spot orgasm, okay? And so that is where you're hitting and stimulating erogenous zones around the cervix in the cervical area. So much like you have a G, the G spot creates a certain sensation with a woman and it creates a certain type of orgasm. Well, that cervical, so whether it's the posterior fornix or anterior fornix on either side of the cervix, stimulating that and creating an orgasm is a whole nother feeling. And so women who have that type of orgasm, they report a deep, deep feeling of just being like penetration and being owned and like so it's very dominant for them even if the guy is having sex with her in a really slow and, and, and almost gentle manner so he doesn't slam her cervix it's this deep penetrative feeling that she has and it causes almost for a lot of women most women really almost like a full body orgasm and so it, it creates this different deep orgasm that, sh that a woman, when she experiences that, it's just a very different type of orgasm than taking her vibrator and putting on the outside of her clitoris, okay? And so it's a whole nother level. Most women never get to experience this. Every woman is capable of experiencing it though. And so I'm gonna talk about a little bit how to create this sensation with your partner because once you do this what think about how this works your it's the most dominant feeling she's going to have with a guy deep inside of her stimulating these erogenous zones her being completely like basically the inside her insides just taken over by this guy filled up by this dude controlled in a sense by this dude's very dominant even if it's slow and then stimulating her so deeply that it creates this orgasmic this deep full body orgasm. So that there's, that is probably the ultimate like level we can think of where that is either the type of orgasm or at least is being incorporated. Cause there's also 
where you can stimulate both the G-spot, the clitoris, and those areas, creating a combination effect for her orgasm that's really intense. The uh, A-spot or uh, P-spot orgasm, whichever you want to call it, it's actually two different spots, but my belief is that it creates a sim basically the same sensation kind of with either one. We'll just call it a, C a cervical orgasm just for the sake of it, right? That type of orgasm for her, it'll actually last long too. It can last a couple minutes even, okay? So it's really intense, deep feeling and can last a long time. Sometimes she'll have a clitoral orgasm or even a G-spot orgasm, depending on what you're doing and the shape of your equipment and all those things while she's having that kind of orgasm. It's just, it's a phenomenal uh, out of control feeling that she's having and just her whole body gets sensitive to the touch. And there's a lot that happens. And actually she can end up even women who have previously not usually been multi-orgasmic will find that they're so sensitive that they can be multi-orgasmic afterwards in a way that they can't even control it. And it's like, it's almost overwhelming or too much for them. And so it really puts them in a different headspace and could cause a lot of emotion, cause tears, cause her to cry, extreme feeling of euphoria, happiness. I mean, it's just, there's all kinds of stuff that happens when you create this type of an orgasm. So this, in my opinion, it's, there's lots of different ways. I mean, to alpha widow, your partner is really just means that you're the best she can do. And that's what she perceives. And so when she perceives you as her best option, and let's say she's never had an orgasm before, and she has one with you, or she doesn't usually orgasm sexually at all, but then she orgasms with you all the time, but it's only orally, let's say, well, then you're still the best she can do at that point. Okay. So, so, I mean, it's, obviously subjective to per, per person and her levels of experiences. But this takes things to a level that's hard to compete with. I mean, really short of doing pornography and, you know, multiple partner scenarios in the same scene and stuff like that, where she's just getting put through the ringer. Short of that, there's not much else that can beat this type of a feeling. Let's look at some anatomy here. All right, hopefully you can see my mouse here. So this here is the butt. So no, it's not a pregnant lady. This is her front. <laughs> the right side's her front, left side's her, her backside there. Okay. So trying to make this YouTube friendly a little bit. I know it's probably not going to be very YouTube friendly. I don't care. This is just for you guys to offer uh, some stuff. And we're going to talk more about these types of things in our seduction ment mentorship program. And that's going to be a year long membership. And we're going to talk about these types of things in more detail without worry about censorship. So that's, what's going to be cool. This is probably going to be get censored, but I'm going to keep it as clean as I can. Um, and, and just deal with the consequences. So anyways, you can see here, here's our vaginal opening. Now what I'm not showing here, and that's because it's already a long enough video as it is, was we'll talk about in other lessons, we can talk about the clitoris. Now to see the head of her clitoris is here, but the clitoris is actually an organ that can swells up when she's aroused and goes around and around actually along a small, small pieces of it travel along the vaginal wall on the, and then there's right around the opening. Okay. Of the vaginal opening, you have the bulbous parts of the clitoris there. And when that, when she gets aroused, this, the head of the clitoris that you see swells and becomes more visible. Um, but so does the internal parts of the clitoris, which is a lot more. And so that's what allows her to feel pleasure during penetrative sex. Okay. And there's a lot we don't know as far as how the nerve endings are connected. So we know, so we'll look here. So the anterior fornix is here. You can see on my mouse there, we got the we got the cervix here, okay, the uterus here. Right before you reach that is the anterior fornix. The posterior fornix is right on the back end of it, okay? So when you stimulate these two areas, that can cause a lot of sensations of pleasure and create that orgasm for her. Now, the nerves that those are attached to are something called the, uh, the pelvic and the hypogastric and vagus nerves. We know that it's a different feeling 
because this is more attached to like the vagus nerves. Now there may be some neural connections to the clitoris as well, but there's a lot we don't know about this stuff too that needs to be researched. I mean, shoot, just, it was only a couple decades ago they found out the clitoris was big, was not, was an entire organ. So <laughs> science and understanding the female anatomy sometimes is a little bit behind. And so there's going to be more research and evidence and there's some ideas that aren't exactly um, substantiated yet. I'm going to try not to present those ideas here, but here's what we're looking at. Okay. So here's our vaginal wall in here. All right. And so obviously we're going to want to penetrate her and reach deep inside near the cervix and right here. Now, any women watching this are probably thinking, I don't like my cervix slammed. Yep, I get that. We're going to address that. <laughs> okay, in a second. So we're going to go into a different diagram. And so now here you can see, okay, an actual, the blue is clearly the guy. Okay, and then that's clearly the, the girl. All right, so here's another diagram. Now, as you can see, he's reaching the anterior fornix here. He's not quite able to reach the posterior. So here's what happens during arousal. The cervix actually moves upwards. So watch if you can see my mouse, where it's traveling to, it moves upward like that kind of and clears more or less an opening. So it doesn't get slammed heavily by the male. All right. Because if he's slamming this area heavily, that's going to be uncomfortable for her and cause, I mean, I won't say damage, but it really can cause, it can cause like bruising and uncomfortable feelings, which is not going to help that orgasm at all. And so arousal will cause us to like more or less lift, which can make it more difficult depending on your size and her size to reach these areas. So that's a good uh, intro here to talk about size for a second. Um, size does matter, but you don't need the largest thing in the planet, okay? My be best rule of thumb, I mean, if you're wondering where you stand, is that better than average is good, too big is just too big. Okay, what's too big? Well, that's going to depend on the girl because her vaginal canal cavity, whichever you want to call it, is anywhere from three to seven inches. And that's going to depend too on her time of the month, ovulation cycle, and all that stuff. So if she's a smaller girl, and it also depends on her level of arousal, but you're going to want her very aroused for this. And I'll explain why that is too, of course, that's other beyond the obvious. But this vaginal canal is, you know, different sizes too, just as male, the male members, different sizes. So if she's only like a three to four inch vaginal canal, a guy with a normal sized member there is gonna slam the back of her vaginal cavity, all right? And so what actually hurts is having the back of this vaginal cavity battering rammed and of course the cervix could get hurt and bruised that way too but generally speaking the cervix is out of the way if you can follow this the trajectory here the male member is not gonna just plow through the cervix and end up in the uterus that's not how the female anatomy works and so this is angled upward for a reason it, it protects that uterus and that opening. So when he's slamming into, we know when, if you're slamming into the back of her, you can feel that. What you're actually feeling more likely is the back end of that vaginal cavity, which that can be uncomfortable for her, okay, to hit that too hard and, and too repetitively. Or, or it, it could be either uncomfortable, it would feel like a gut punch to her, or it can cause um, more or less a numbing sensation back there, which makes it kind of more difficult for her to have this type of orgasm. She'll still be able to have clitoral orgasms, but you know, too much of this forceful stuff. And that'll depend on the girl too and what she's used to in her arousal triggers. So you have to be big enough to reach though, the either the back part of the cavity or at the very least, the front part where the uh, anterior fornix is, all right? If you're big enough, you can reach further back here now, girls who tend to be more, we could call them size queens or, you know, that are not uncomfortable with a guy smashing it a little bit or putting a lot of pressure on that vaginal cavity. Well, they, they, those are girls that can have the 
um, posterior fornix stimulated, which is where my mouse is right there. Okay. And they, that's, that's where dude is bigger. He can stimulate that and she won't be uncomfortable, but a lot of girls are uncomfortable with that. And that's too deep for a lot of girls. And so that gut punch will override her, any pleasure sensation she gets in these areas. And then she won't really feel like she wants to orgasm Her body won't really won't feel like that. And so for a lot of guys staying a little bit more shallow into the um, anterior fornix is a better place. It kind of creates about the same type of orgasm from what I can tell. The difference is, is whether she really wants that pain associated with it or not. And that may sound strange, but some women, and, and I find two women uh, who like a little bit rougher sex, they tend to want the rough sex right around ovulation, which makes sense. Um, given our evolutionary desire to want that alpha forceful dominant guy. So she wants to feel dom dominated. She wants to get like smashed into the vaginal cavity and she wants some of that pain and that, and, and she wants to feel dominated and that'll make her arousal go up and then stimulating that posterior fornix and anterior fornix both um, plus all the other stimulation she's getting will create really intense orgasms for her. So some really hard, forceful, penetrative sex for some women, I find it again, it's usually during that period. That's, that works really well for them. Okay. Um, some women though, that's not what they want. <laughs> all right. So that's another thing on this is you have to be aware of a lot of things here, which is why most of you guys are going to screw this up completely. All right, which is why you do need to get into the damn mentorship program for a year so we can work on all of the small details because the details matter. All right, with stuff like this, you wanted to make yourself good. We can talk about generalities and talk about general concepts. You'll get pretty good. You'll get better than most guys. You want to go from good to great. However, we need to get into the weeds. We need to get into the details. And, you know, that, that's going to take some reconditioning of habits and behaviors too, and a complete uh, reconditioning of our awareness and your awareness of your sexual partner. And if you have different sexual partners, some, you know, which you're going to throughout your life period, I'm sure, hopefully, right? Different girls are going to have different needs or ways that these areas can be stimulated. The G spot, in case you're wondering, is really more along where the bladder is here. It's, it's, and it's more shallow. Okay, it's, it's closer to the opening than what a lot of guys think, all right? So deep, we're talking anterior, posterior, fornix near the cervix, a little bit shallow, like about a little less than halfway down or in is usually where that G spot is. And then the outside of her clitoris is here, okay? And so now that we understand all of this, why do you need to understand this? Well, because I don't know how big your uh, member is or what it's shaped like. Okay, that's all going to make a difference. If you're somebody who has a really big uh, head and really pronounced glands, you're going to hit these areas maybe a little bit easier than somebody who isn't. But that doesn't mean that somebody who has a smaller head, because there's some guys, let's say, who could be really thick down here, but maybe smaller in the head area. Well, there's ways that that guy's going to have to hit these areas versus another guy with a different shape, right? And again, there's a difference between of sizes too. Now, guys get all hung up on size, but you can reposition her hips accordingly in order to hit things right. And I say right because you hit too hard too often. I mean, sometimes it's nice just to smack her real good in the back of the vaginal cavity and let her know who's boss or whatever. <laughs> but that's only do that like a thrust or, and then you're back to like stimulating things you know, in a, in a, in a nice benevolent way. <laughs> okay. And so, um, you don't want to just smash and smash and smash because if you're, and if you're big or whatever, that's just not going to be comfortable for her. eventually any, any pleasurable sensations will be overridden by the discomfort of what you're doing. And so you have to really pay attention. Now, if you're small and smashing away, but you're in a position that's not affecting these areas, and not stimulating some of the areas inside of her. And then she's kind of maybe being suffocated or I say suffocated, but like pressed against or just not in a good place for clitoral stimulation. 
Well, now you have the stereotypes of, you know, girls who don't like guys with small wieners. All right. The reality is, though, a guy who's small can stimulate these things, too, and allow for her to do external clitoris stimulation, all kind of stuff, and actually do pretty well. But anyway, um, this is, could be, this is already a long video. So we're going to try to stick to the topic here, which is the alpha widowmaker, the A spot or P spot or what some people will call cervical orgasm and reaching that. So now that you understand this anatomy piece here, okay, let's talk about positioning. And that concludes part one of the Alpha Widowmaker. And stay tuned, because in a couple weeks, I'm going to roll out the Seduction Mastery membership program. It's a year-long membership program that will get you very dialed in. Uh, if there's a selection process for it, you'll be screened by one of my counselors and it'll be one-on-one -on -one calls and Zoom calls as well as hours and hours worth of course material. So if you want to be a part of that, be a part of that community and get screen, screened for it, dates and announcements as to when that'll roll out will be happening soon. Oh.